Hello everyone. As I said in the previous video, uh, in this current one, I would uh, still like to, to look at this Queen's Gambit uh, declined endgame with the double death pawns in a, in a different version than in the previous one. So like not, uh, not with f5, but if uh, black is not uh, closing uh, his bishop. So our game is uh, Matthias Blubaum against uh, Arkady Naidic from the European Championship uh, 2017, which was played in Minsk. And at the time of the game, uh, Arkady had actually 2700 exactly, so a pretty impressive rating. So they started uh, with this move order. And he went for this bishop f5. So I am saying that you know even with 2700, so it's absolutely came back to the fashion, you know, for as a solid weapon uh, with black. But again, from video to the other video, I am still not changing my opinion that we should be rather welcome this uh, this opening. So queen f3, bishop g6 takes, queen f6 takes, g f6, knight f3. Knight d7, knight h4, and of course, since uh, not knowing the the background of the game uh, and preparation of the players, I'm not sure that uh, whether Black prepared this knight b6. I would be surprised because once again, I I believe the move is dubious. So, anyways, knight b6 was played f4. So as we learned in the previous video, this is the correct way immediately uh, targeting this bishop. And not f5, it's in the game of cards, and but h5 was played here. And now, a very strong move from white, which is, which is uh, important to play. So, he played king f2. As I briefly mentioned in the previous video, playing with f5 uh, would be actually uh, quite inaccurate uh, right away. So, black is playing bishop h7, obviously. And here, if we go right uh, right away with h3, then after bishop h6, we are even worse in this position. So this pawn is hanging. King f2 has to be played. And after bishop g5, the knight has to move, and we are losing the f5 pawn. So it's a complete uh, failure. Instead, uh, we can, in this position, play king f2. But again, black is playing bishop h6. And I believe he's, he's pretty close to being uh, completely fine in this position, even though, once again, this bishop is sidelined, but our knight on h4 is not much better. Um, so, for example, possible continuation is, is bishop d3, knight c8, h3. So we are trying to cage this bishop with the pawn on, uh, on g4, and then our knight can go and... You know that's that's the dream, but that's the, here comes uh, Black's very important resource of playing Bishop G5, uh, kicking the knight, and then playing H4. So now it's not. I mean, it's possible to play G4, but Black is going to take, and uh, he did not manage to stabilize uh, F5 pawn with another one. So, and if a piece has to protect it all the time, it's not. Uh, it's not so simple. So that's the point of king f2, that, you know, this bishop h6 will not come with the tempo. So basically, the, the threat of f5 and h3 is now kind of renewed. As we will see in the game, actually, because I believe uh, Nidic played a uh, bad move uh, in this position, which is actually the most common move in the position. So. And it's very logical, but it's simply like uh, too slow. It's knight to c8. So instead of that, uh, there are two other options which I looked at. One is uh, clearly a computer, uh, you know, influenced move, and it was only played in one correspondence game. And uh, I would never, uh, you know. Imagine a human willingly go to into such position. I mean, it maybe has a decent drawing chances, but it's just not how uh, human humans are playing. 
So it is F5. So it's uh, it's a pretty shocking move, <laughs> I would say. So it's very similar to the Carson game. That okay, F5, and I would say it looks even worse in some sense. But so we play Bishop D3. So now Knight C4, which saved the pawn in the in the previous model game, is now not saving any pawn because uh, E3 is not. A is not attacked, so we can just take on f5. And if uh, black goes for the b2 pawn after rook b1, we we are gathering uh, the b7 pawn. So the idea is completely different, and once again, extremely shocking. And it, it was played in a correspondence game. It's bishop e7. So black is even forcing us to take the pawn and just plays king d7. So the idea is that uh, simply because of this f4 move. Our uh, structure is not perfect, so it will be hard to create pass pawns on the on the king side. And yeah, basically there is some very weird positional compensation for the pawn, and it is indeed not so easy to uh, to convert this with uh, with black, but uh, sorry if, uh, with white, but. The game is for two results, so black is not going to win this end game uh, down a pawn. So now king e2. I looked at, I mean, it's very logical protecting the bishop, and black plays rook a to g8. So now most logical looks g3 because, of course, um, okay, now bishop f5, bishop f5 is a check, but we don't want this pawn to hang on g2. And after g3, Black plays king e6, knight e7, trades on d3, king d3, and king e7. And I finish the analysis here as, you know, black uh, is worse for sure, but it's not very easy for white also. So the problem is that this g3 actually provides a hook for black to trade some more pawns with uh, with h4. Also f5 is an idea which, which would block the position so much that it's really hard to create a passer for uh, for white and also knight will come around to d6. I mean, a computer gives a surprisingly low score for white here, to be honest. So, like, it's a healthy pawn after all. We don't even have a double pawn, but simply the fact that black is relatively active and it's hard to create uh, a pass pawn uh, gives very decent drawing chances and the correspondence game. In this variation, and it is a draw. It, it went a little bit differently. This is my analysis, what you can see now, but um, it's still not very easy for uh, for white. So overall, I, I believe it, it's better. Uh, like you know, if, if by some miracle this you will have such position in in over the board game to play like rook uh, g1. So the idea is that not to give this g3 for black to to trade the, that potentially weak pawn. And now the game can go like bishop b4, knight h4, trade, bishop takes on c3, bc, and knight a4, for example. And it's still not very easy to progress, uh, to make a progress with white. Of course, h g4 is, is an idea, but okay, for that, the knight is not uh, placed too well. And black also has his ideas, like playing knight b2, knight c4, maybe you're playing b5. So on the queen side, black is doing good, and again, our pawn structure means that we have also a lot of weak squares to take care of. Again, not very likely to happen, but just uh, just to have some, uh, you know, idea that uh, that this can happen, and probably I, I would aim for this position with white and say that again, up a pawn, certain certainly better, no risk of losing. I'll try to try to convert it probably by you know playing rook b1 then bringing back the knight some, maybe e4 or c4 if I can do that's amazing uh, such ideas yeah so that's that's the computer way and there is some other just a little bit more understandable for uh, understandable for for humans that if, if bishop h7 
my opinion, this is practically speaking the the best try for black. And so now let's say we play g3. I mean, if we ever want to take on uh, h5 and we want, then uh, so our pieces will not hang on the the h file. So now black goes knight c8, bishop e2, knight d6, bishop takes h5, a5, bishop e2. So this type of compensation is. Um, I would say easier to understand for a human. So black lost a pawn, but the bishop uh, on h7 is not bad. Uh, he will play a5, a4 in the next move probably. Of course, we are up a pawn, and this is not a good line, but uh, for black. But uh, you know, if, if he's looking for some type of compensation, probably this should be the. Uh, this should be my this would be my choice instead of uh, but these are you know you can understand the idea both are aimed against f5 so bishop h7 the point is again that uh, if we go f5 then bishop h6 and the bishop is in time to to block the position here on the king side but after uh, the game move knight c8 white played very correct move f5 Bishop h7 and h3, and the bishop is not in time. Bishop is simply not in time. g4 is coming in the next move, and this bishop is uh, locked down. So, like objectively speaking, as early as move 15, the game is decided here. So it's a decisive advantage for uh, for white. If uh, no real mistake or blunder from white, then this game should be should be a relatively easy win actually and this is simply a full piece advantage so let's see how it went in in practice so knight d6 bishop uh, g4 king d7 bishop d3 bishop h6 and you know the big advantage of having the pawn on g4 is that our knight is free to go to better squares so knight g2 rook e8 so both sides are playing very natural moves but Black has minus one piece. Rook e7, knight f4, and bishop g5. And here, basically, there are two ideas um, for white, how to break uh, black's position. So one, what uh, Bluebaum uh, tried to do is to play for e4, eventually, and then... Uh, trade this strong d6 knight, probably trade the rooks, basically trade as many pieces as possible. And, you know, logically speaking, if you trade everything and this bishop remains, then eventually black will have not enough resources to to hold the position. I mean, it's a good plan, so it's it's like not, uh, not a bad idea, but it's not that easy to... To execute, I would say, because there are always some some little uh, tricks from black. And the other one, which I mean, I just looked at and I, I couldn't, cannot even find a hint of counterplay for for black. To be honest, is if you, if you just start to push the pawns on the on the queen side. So we play b4. So we basically do a minority attack, and I don't see anything, absolutely anything, for black uh, to do. So he, he can play rook e8, great, then we play rook e1. We could also play with the other rook, but okay, just, just in case uh, black wants to take, take, then this rook can still do a job on the h5. And it really doesn't matter if the rook is on a1 or not, black cannot use any pieces to stop a4, b5. So plays a6, a4, and yeah, here, I mean, there is nothing, I mean... Uh, we will play probably at some moment rook e2, so just in case that, you know, any time when we are switching over to the queen side, then we can also double rooks there. So nothing really what uh, black can do. I mean, I just made a few moves to, to illustrate how we are going to win the game. So b5, take, take, king b7. So black is just waiting in this line, rook e2, king b8. Bringing the rook king d7, so we go rook a7, king d8. So we created the weakness on c6, and then we attack the weakness on c6. 
in V7 and now amongst other things there is uh, there is already this sacrifice of a of a knight and yeah I mean at the very least we can take back the rook we can uh, we can give some rook a7 check or bring over the rook at some moment to see it. even a mating attack is not uh, not impossible and you know on paper we are down a piece but in in reality this is equal uh, number of pieces because h7 bishop is not uh, not taking part in this game so that would have been much much easier without uh, without a real possibility of uh, of messing up so instead rook e1 was played rook e8 and e4 so very very straightforward play from white but unfortunately it's not working if it's working then it's much faster than what i showed to you but you know it's probably better to win uh, slowly but surely instead of uh, instead of um, potentially blundering because the position is simply you know, strategically over so i mean playing a move like rookie two then bringing the other one to e1 maybe knight g2 at some moment and then playing e4 would have been a uh, i mean it's still not without a risk of uh, of blundering something because still you know there is one major difference between the two plans that you know e4 still gives some uh, job for the black species and if you play on the other side completely then this on the e-file is nothing happening then it's hard to imagine uh, what black is doing so e4 and uh, here knight uh, played an excellent uh, defense he took on g4 h takes g4 and bishop takes on f5 so he can sacrifice this bishop finally which was really like a, not a real piece and get something in return so of course ef5 is not possible because there is rook e1 so gf5 is a must and here comes the idea this knight f5 so black uh, managed to get two pawns at this moment also d4 is under attack and white is still pinned here we have opposite colored bishops and the material is getting reduced so it's a very very good practical uh, decision from uh, from black and maybe the position is objectively fine now so let's say knight fe2 was an option but then de4 bishop e4 and knight h4 check so if the king moves then e4 bishop is uh, falling so it's better to take like this i mean white is better here but i have very serious doubt that uh, that it can be converted to a win so we only have three pawns we have two knights you know like two knights cannot give a checkmate so it's already like uh, very very unclear that how can we win this position I, I would say draw is the most likely result from from here so instead after knight f5 uh, knight g2 was played and uh, yeah i can give you or you know if you want i, I would like to a uh, small task so Nidich played uh, bishop d2 in this position so the question is what is the problem with this move so he played here so instead he should have played uh, knight takes on d4 king f2 d takes on e4 knight e4 and for example king c7 so the position went through a huge uh, change and this is not you know something we should look for when we have a strategically completely winning position so now black has three pawns for the piece opposite colored bishops only two pawns for white and the drawing chances are very very high it's, it's probably objectively holdable position for black instead uh, I mean, of course bishop d2 is also an interesting move at, at first sight i mean uh, the point is that rook e2 can be met by knight d4 check which is obviously amazing and if rook goes to d1 then black wants to play bishop c3 
and then e4 pawn is, is hanging. So, but unfortunately it had a, you know, a very strong, uh, well, it had a very strong move here, and that's actually the, the most obvious move also. It is e takes on f5. So that just wins the game. Unfortunately, for black, there is nothing to do here. So obviously, rook e1 was played in the game. Obviously, I, uh, Nidic's idea was to take the rook. And I mean, it's a completely fine position for black. Uh, if not one move for white, but after that one move, it's resignation right away. It's knight takes on d5. So the rook has uh, rook is uh, under attack. It has no squares to go on the e file. Knight f6 is also coming, and of course the point is that if c d5, then there is bishop b5. And after king d6, we take take, and the end of the variation, the bishop is lost. So this knight uh, knight d5 was probably what uh, black missed, and yeah, it is just game over in this way. So he took with the rook on e1, but yeah. Here, of course, the knight takes, and it is just um, just an extra piece. Uh, rook e1, trading, king e3. So, yeah, they played a few more moves. I mean, white just has to create a weakness on the queen side, which he did this way, then played a4, knight b3, and after king f3, black resigns. So, the knight is protecting the weakness, attacking this pawn on, on a5. There is the second weakness on c6. That will, that will be attacked by the bishop, and the king has a free way to go here in case uh, you know, it will be needed. So, I mean, it will be probably needed, but this is the, the advantage of one extra piece. So, we attack three pawns, and black can only protect too so yeah it's um it was quite an uh, you know interesting game it, it shouldn't have been i would say but and uh, this a4 made uh, e4 made it interesting but uh, i believe still a lot to learn from it and you know this position even though even though it is uh, pretty bad for black that there are these still interesting to see this uh, how computer plays such positions and you know goes for a something like this where it's down upon but with the huge drawing chances again it is rather just uh, out of curiosity i looked at it i, I don't think it will uh, happen in any over the board games only if blacks just wants to pay, play for a draw at all costs with the with the pawn down, but it's not very likely. Okay, so that's it for now about this endgame line. Uh, I plan to go on with something completely different in the in the next videos, and I hope you uh, liked it, and uh, we will meet in the in the next videos as well.